Hello folks, welcome back. Today we're diving into something big, very big news out of China, contemporary Amprex Technology Co Limited, otherwise known as CATL, has officially started mass production of its fifth generation LFP battery. And while people think that they are basically stopping LFP chemistry because of the sodium uh, Nextra battery going into production in a few weeks time, yeah, that's not true. LFP chemistry is still a thing and they are still producing it. The new version of theirs is going into production. So while there is still a bit of mystery around the full spec uh, for this new chemistry, there is now enough data for us to talk about it and enough credible claims that we can actually pull it apart a little bit, see what is real, see what is missing and why this matters, why it might matter to you more than uh, you think, whether you're into EVs or batteries for your house or investing or anything like that, let's jump into it. First up, what exactly has happened and what is this new chemistry? At the end of 2025 World Power Battery Conference in Yibin, Sichuan, which is a place in China, CATL's founder and chairman Robin Zeng confirmed that the company has begun mass production of its fifth generation lithium ion phosphate cells basically. He said this new generation has achieved quote new breakthroughs in energy density and cycle life. So that is straight from China Post, basically the website which covered the announcement and they also pointed out that CATL's current fourth gen LFP cells already outperform the industry's mainstream second and third generation products in both energy density and lifespan and cost. So CATL's global battery market share between uh, January and September this year, 2025, was about 36.6% according to their data, still comfortably the largest in the world. Key data and numbers we do have. So the concrete stuff, what has actually uh, been said and what we can verify, the fifth generation LFP is now in production. That is definitely confirmed as well. Number two, CATL's previous fourth generation LFP battery cells were already impressive. They've been claimed to last up to 1 million kilometers or around 12 years in certain configurations. That is from Auto Evolution's coverage as well. And it gives us a baseline for what long life actually means, a million kilometers. And let's just say, for example, it's not a million. Let's just say six or 700,000. That is astonishing. Number three, there are some wild performance claims out there about the fifth gen. One report from Discovery Alert says that the new cells can add 478 kilometers of range in about 10 or 11 minutes of charging under ideal conditions with a peak charging power of 830 kilowatts at 20% state of charge. That same source mentions 410 kilometers in 20 minutes, even at minus 20 degrees Celsius. So they're getting better. If that's accurate, that's enormous. That's an enormous step for LFP chemistry, uh, which traditionally has not been that great in cold weather. Number four, CATL's sodium iron brand called Naxtra, incredible, like in mind-bendingly good, is also entering mass production in December in a few weeks time. I was recently invited to talk about that and to go around the factory and, and go back to China and to talk about it with an energy density of around 175 watt hours per kilogram. It's, it's, basically, it's, it's basically up there with LFP chemistry, but it's sodium chemistry. So that's from Reuters or Reuters, depending on how you say it. And while it's a separate chemistry, it shows CATL is moving very, very fast across uh, multiple fronts, different types of chemistry. They've also got a massive research and development team, like I've said before, 200 people with a doctorate just in one of their teams for research and development. Incredibly large company. Number five, from a materials and supply chain perspective, the fifth gen LFP chemistry keeps the same huge advantage as its predecessors. Uh, no nickel, no cobalt. It's literally just iron and phosphate, which are abundant. So that means far less supply chain risk compared with uh, traditional NMC batteries. One of the charts comparing them literally shows zero cobalt dependency and no nickel required for LFP versus high dependency for NMC. Finally, in terms of market scale, CATL's domestic share 
of uh, installed capacity in China in October, so the other month, 2025 this year, was around 43% equal to 36.14, if my memory is correct, gigawatt hours installed that same month alone. My head is full of numbers, so that was, um, I think that's correct, don't quote me. So they're not announcing something theoretical, they're producing at scale. So what we don't know yet, which is an interesting uh, discussion, I'll just try and shorten this down as I can, as much as I can. As exciting as it sounds, there are still some big blanks. We don't yet have verified energy density from CATL's mouth, as it were, and uh, so we can't quote the actual figure for the fifth gen sales. No watt hour per kilogram or watt hour per litre officially published. Uh, we have an idea though, for sure. We also don't have independent test data for cycle life, uh, whether it's, uh, say for example, 2000 cycles or 3000 cycles or more, uh, still retaining 80, 85% capacity as is the industry standard these days, there's still no pricing or cost per kilowatt hour number either, which is, is critical for automakers, but also as, as uh, for, for us who, who report on it basically. So, so we don't know which vehicle models will get these new sales first or how quickly production will scale. And finally, many of the high-end claims like 830 kilowatts or 478 kil uh, kilometers in 10 minutes come from a single article, not from CATL's own documentation. So we've got to take that with a pinch of salt, basically. We do know it's happening and there are some very good reasons to believe why these things are probably true. So those may be early lab results, for example, or even pre-production prototypes rather than verified production data. So for anyone watching from Australia, it's worth noting that local rollout still uncertain. We don't know when or if these batteries will make it into Australian market electric vehicles yet or at what cost. How this compares with previous generations then. Let's talk about that. To put it into context, older LFP cells, what you might call second or third generation, typically offered about 100 to 160 watt hours per kilogram, usually 160, 165, something like that. Meanwhile, premium NMC chemistry and NCA chemistries can hit 200 and 250 watt hours per kilogram, sometimes even higher. So if CATL's fifth gen can push LFP chemistry uh, energy density closer to that range, to 10, to 20, to 30, then we're talking about closing uh, most of the performance gap with much safer chemistry. On charging speed, older LFP packs were usually limited to one, one and a half C rates for uh, charging far slower than ultra-fast NMC packs, for example. The, uh, if these numbers hold up 830 kilowatts of peak charging, that suggests two or three C charging, or even higher in real uh, real world EVs. A very big jump, that's a very big leap. And again, LFP already had the upper hand on cost and raw materials being free of cobalt and nickel. If CATL can now boost performance while keeping those costs uh, lower and safety advantages as well, it's a big strategic move. So why does this matter? Let's briefly cover that. So why is this such a big deal for the industry? If CATL can deliver a high performance LFB cell with longer life, higher energy density and faster charging, maybe even cheaper, it puts serious pressure on every legacy battery chemistry and the automakers still tied to them. And so it means more car makers can shift to LFP chemistry, cutting their battery costs, improving safety, reducing reliance on scarce materials such as cobalt or even nickel. For the global EV market, this means cheaper and more reliable cars, even in the wake of uh, sodium iron chemistry coming out in the next few, uh, few weeks, basically. And also in price sensitive markets like Australia, where affordability has been a huge barrier because people don't want to spend British prices in Australia. That would not go very well at all. I mean, it's for the new, like for example, the if we get the premium BYD Atto 1, currently uh, we now know it's going to cost $28,000 in Australia. The UK, people in the UK are paying 40, the equivalent of 43 or $44,000 for the same car. Again, the BYD Dolphin, Seal and Atta One, 60 to 100% more expensive in the UK for no apparent reason. So for the story of 
Chinese EV disruption. This just reinforces CATL's dominance. They already hold 36.5% global share. And announcements like this remind everyone where the innovation is coming from. For policy and supply chains, LFP aligns incredibly well, eh, perfectly, with government priorities. It's stable, low-risk materials, politically not a big concern, and better, for, uh, better sustainability. If these fifth-gen cells start performing closer to NMC levels, expect to see regulators favouring them, favoring them uh, more strongly. For automakers, this opens new flexibility models that previously needed expensive NMC packs for a range, such as smaller cars, like say, for example, the Insta. They might start to switch to the LFP chemistry, something like that. Without compromise, you'll just get a better battery and premium brands could even use LFP in more models, reshaping pricing strategies and uh, resale values. For Australia, this means the potential for more affordable EVs with excellent longevity and safety, but we'll still need to see how quickly local supply, pricing and infrastructure catch up. This is a big issue. A lot of, a lot of people talking about this in Australia. My thoughts and a bit of caution as well. I'm genuinely excited about this. I think it's brilliant. I don't think they're gonna be better or more favor, uh, favored than sodium ion chemistry. It ticks pretty much every box that we talk about though on this channel. Legacy brands dragging their heels, China pushing ahead, obviously, or pushing ahead. They've basically pushed ahead. It's more of a past tense thing. And LFP technology improving faster than anybody expected, but not as fast as sodium ion, interestingly. Let's wrap this up a little bit because I've been lectured a couple of times for making my videos almost 20 minutes long this last week. The headline, pretty simple, CATL's fifth generation LFP battery has entered mass production with promises of higher energy density, longer life and ultra fast charging. Though CATL have announced that they are, they have put it into uh, mass production, they just haven't given us the data for them, uh, for the chemistry. The numbers to remember, 36.5% global market share for CATL, 43% domestic share in China, potential 480 kilometers of charge in 10 minutes and uh, possibly 830 kilowatt peak power. But we still need the missing data verified. So watt hour per kilogram is one, obviously, confirmed cycle life, uh, cost per kilowatt hour, and independent testing. So here's what I'll be watching for very, very closely over the next uh, one, two, three months. CATL release, uh, releasing actual energy density figures, uh, announcements from automakers adopting this new cell, uh, cost numbers that show how it cha changes EV pricing, performance validation under real-world conditions, and how fast production scales globally, including to Europe and in Australia. Australia, I think, is at this point, by in a lot of people's minds, it's a bit of a test market for them, like a bit of a focus group on, on EV tech. Thank you for watching. These are the channel members. These are the people that uh, support, and they chuck a couple of dollars a month. You are very welcome to join on Patreon, YouTube members, and you can buy me a coffee. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.